And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at an old game. Uh, we're talking 1973, I believe, is when it first came out. I don't know which edition this is because there are many different editions of it. I have the Ravensburger edition here. Uh, Heron Tortoise is widely known as the first winner of the Spiel des Jahres. It's a very simple game that offers a lot of strategy behind it. Essentially, you're all a bunch of rabbits running a race where you learn the old motto, slow and steady wins the race, as Aesop said. Um, but in Heron Tortoise, there's a bit of math involved because you can move far and fast, but for an expensive price, or you can move shorter distance for a cheaper price, but slower. And you have to kind of find a balance in between them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The rules for this game are very simple. It is, it's basically a race. Each player has a rabbit, and they're trying to get around to the end. And at the beginning of the race, you're going to get a certain number of carrots. So let's say it is a four or a three-player race. At that point, you would get 68 carrots, but in a five or six-player race, you would get 98 carrots. Now, the reason you need, the carrots are important is because you need to pay them to move. Everybody has a race card, so let's look at this for a moment. You can see all the different numbers here. If you want to move a certain number of spaces, this is how many carrots you need to pay. So to move 15 spaces requires 120 carrots. It really does get ridiculous as the game goes by, uh, but it's there. I don't know that I've ever gone more than like 23 spaces or so, but hey, you can. So what you do in your turn is you either move forward or backwards. If you move forward, you pay the number of carrots you want to move and you move to that space. You cannot land on top of another carrot and you also cannot go to a tortoise space. You can go to any other space. You can move backwards if you want on your turn and when you move backwards you can only go to the last tortoise space. So for example from here I can move back here. And then you get 10 carrots per space you move. So I'd get 20. If I was here I'd get 30. And you can see some spots get you more turtles. And you can continue to go backwards as far as you want to get more carrots. And the more carrots you get, obviously, the faster you can go forward. The other spaces on the board, when you land on a lettuce space, or cabbage space, I'm sorry, or lettuce, I don't know, cabbage lettuce, you get rid of one of your cards. But you have to lose a turn to do that. You're going to start with three of these cabbage cards. And so when you land there, you put your piece face down. Next turn, you turn it face up. You then take one of your cards, chuck it aside, and you can go the following turn. Uh, if you land on one of these number spaces, you see this one says three, two, four, here's a one, five, six. At the beginning of your next turn, if that's the position in the race you are, so let's say I'm in the fourth spot and I am in fourth place at that point in time, and I'm on a number four here, then I get to move like normal, but I get a bonus of 40 carats, 20, 30 carats. 10, 50, or 60. So if you can maneuver yourself into the right position in the race. If you land on a carrot, you can skip a turn to either lose 10 carrots or gain 10 carrots. You say, well, why would you want to lose 10 carrots? Because at the end of the game, you need to land exactly on the house here, and you need to have no cabbage and less carrots than your position in the race times 10. So if I'm the first person there, I need to have 10 or less carrots left over. And since you're trying to be the first person there, because really, who cares about second, third, fourth, or fifth place, or sixth, then you basically need to have less than 10 carrots, so you may need to drop some carrots off along the way. Now, if you can't land there, then obviously you're forced to go backwards, and you can see if you're forced to go backwards, you're taking more carrots, which can be a real big pain. Anyhow, uh, the last space is these rabbit spaces. When you land on a rabbit space, you will draw the top rabbit card, and that it basically gives you a random thing that you can do. For example, here, go back to the last carrot square, or win or lose 10 carrots, or drop back one position, or take another turn. So you can see that these cards are kind of a random element. In fact, some people don't like playing with them, but that's just crazy. Because the game's already mathy enough, the rabbits add a bit of fun to that. So that's how you play the first one to the finish. House is the winner. 
Now, Heron Tortoise is a game that I've had for many years, and it's one that I really do enjoy keeping. It's one that I'm going to keep on my shelves because there's a couple things. First, I like the mathiness of it. I don't know why. I like the idea of trying to figure out just how far to jump ahead. Because really, you could say, oh, I'll just save up, save up, save enough carrots to make that one move that shoots me all the way across the board and wins the game. Yeah, that's not going to happen. First of all, there's, no, you, there's not enough carrots for you to be able to do that. Secondly, even if you try to do those big jumps, someone's going to make smaller hops and get there first. You say, well, yeah, but couldn't you use a computer and figure out the optimal place? Well, you could, but you have to constantly be watching what your opponents do because you might, landing on those numbers, depending on what place you are, is going to change, and that depends on how they move. Secondly, that's why I insist that you play with the rabbits because the rabbits add some randomness to the game and you're never quite sure what will happen. But the better player will likely win the race. It's an interesting game. It works with lots of people. It's a good way to teach some math, and it's not heavy on math. Don't be thinking, oh, mathy, I don't want to touch it. No, but it does teach some, and it's an interesting racing game that I've never played anything since that's really like it. So that's Heron Tortoise. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs>